The subject for this video was suggested by Dominic, one of my patrons. If you'd like to help me out with my videos and maybe see your name in the credits, check out my Patreon page. But first, the video. Germany, of course, is a single country, one nation united in a common history and culture, right? Well, not really. It's not in any danger of falling apart, despite a small number of Bavarians who would like to break free from what they call Prussia. But there are many ways of dividing it. For example, there is something called the Aldi Equator. It's not really an equator, but they call it that. You see, there are two different Aldis, one in the north and one in the south. And they're not quite the same. After the Second World War, brothers Karl and Theo Albrecht took over their father's little grocery store and set about the process of creating the commercial beer moth we know today. But in 1961, they fell out over whether or not to sell cigarettes and so created the Aldi Equator. Another equator is more interesting to me, and it involves the German word for apple, which, as every student of the language knows, is Apfel. At least, it is in standard German, but the old regional variations of the language are still very much alive. One way to divide them is between dialects that have a f sound in their word for apple and those that don't. Linguists call this an isogloss, but this one is often known as the apple equator. There's also a white sausage equator, which divides Germany into areas where the lightly cooked white sausage is eaten and those where it isn't. Unbelievably, though, there is a fierce argument over where to draw the line. Some say it's the River Main, some that it's the 49th parallel, some that it's the River Danube, and some that it's within 100 kilometers of Munich. But there's one equator I didn't know about until Dominic suggested it. The Licorice Equator. Licorice is far more popular in the north and west of Germany, especially in Lower Saxony. And in researching this subject, I found different methods of mapping the popularity of licorice. Uh, this is just one of them. But they all broadly agree that the Northwest is licorice land. And this is why, when North Germans make their way south, they routinely complain that they cannot find licorice, especially the less sweet types. One manufacturer of licorice confectionery, Katjes, has the sales figures to prove the point. They sell more than 80% of their licorice in the states of North Rhine-Westphalia and Lower Saxony. There are at least two theories to explain this phenomenon. One is that northern Germany is closer to the sea, and so the air, and therefore a lot of the food, has a salty tang. And so northerners are more used to the slightly salty taste of licorice, while southerners find it quite off-putting. That theory, though, doesn't explain why licorice isn't so popular in Mecklenburg-West Pomerania, which is on the Baltic coast. The second is that since licorice has to be imported from the Orient, it first became known in coastal regions, and so people living nearer the coast have simply had more time to acquire the taste. And in former times, when food was sometimes hard to come by, chewing on a piece of licorice would help stave off the hunger pangs. But that doesn't explain why Bavarians are so notoriously anti-licorice. In the Middle Ages, licorice plants were actually cultivated in Bavaria, and they're still grown today near Bamberg. The consensus among the experts seems to be... nobody really knows. But that's okay. I'm from England and I like licorice, and my wife is from Bavaria and hates it. So... all the more for me. Assuming I can find it in the shops, of course. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.